Hello my guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. So you've probably noticed my voice sounds a little rough. Um, I am sick, and yes, it is with that disease. So my throat's kind of rough, which already makes the voice bad and makes this pretty hard to record. Um, my sinuses are clogged, so that's why it sounds super nasally. And I've barely talked the past couple days because I've been quarantined in my room. So, yeah, not a great day for my voice, but I've put off recording too long. And I'm going to get a video out this week since it is Valentine's. So, screw being sick, we're doing this. So, yes, it is Valentine's Day or like after Valentine's Day? I don't know. No, Valentine's Day is coming up. It's the season. And two weeks ago, I did a little stream where I was reacting to old videos and I reacted to my old Valentine special where I drew monster couples. And they were just so cute. Like if you go back and look at the clip, maybe I can put it up here. I was just screaming about how cute they are because I couldn't get over the cuteness factor. So I decided that I'm doing that again. If you want to watch more videos like this, though, make sure you do subscribe. I'm trying to hit 2k. Uh, I've been trying to hit it for like half a year or something at this point. So please, subscribe so we can reach that goal. And on with the video. So the kind of process I go through is I use this random monster generator, which I'll put in the description below to randomize two monsters and then I just draw them. So the first one I got was a nymph and a poltergeist. So the first thing I had to do was figure out the kind of design for both. So the poltergeist I immediately knew I was just going to have be a basic ghost cause less work for me. And I decided I was going to make this video a week or so before I had to record it. So I had to crunch these drawings. So it's just a normal ghost. Then the nymph, I had to like look up the definition and images because for some reason like I couldn't wrap my head around exactly what a nymph was. I'm still not sure if I exactly got it right, but I just made this girl who kind of looks like a tree because nymphs are just like nature people, I guess. And at first I was going to have these two like in the woods with like this campfire and like having a dinner kind of miming like a romantic candlelit dinner except it's like in the woods and all that but i want to keep these all simple since the originals were fairly simple and i had to get three drawings out in like a week so simple it is so instead i just have them like sitting on a patch of grass they're blushing they look very in love not much else going on besides that so the ghost is just kind of standing there blushing. Um, he does have some like very cute blush going on, some cute eyes, no mouth. I don't know. I feel like for all these drawings, you're going to kind of see it. But I didn't choose what happened in the drawing. The drawing just happened. I don't know. Things get really weird. Not my normal style a lot of times. Uh, but I'll talk about that more later. This one's fairly standard. Um, then the nymph, I tried to have her, like, really just sitting there as well, but also very blushy. Tried to give her this very in-love expression. Uh, this isn't a very standard expression of mine, but I'm trying to push my expressions more and work on that. So, yeah, I think I did pretty good here. I love her expression. It's one of my favorite things in the drawing. Um, and she definitely does look very in love and very happy in this moment. So she has this dress and it's like a tree trunk. It has those kind of ridges and uh, textures of a tree trunk. And then also it's like spiked at the bottom like the roots of a tree going into the ground. Then I also gave her this like curly hair that looks like the leaves of a tree. I really like her design. Still don't know if it's really what a nymph is but it's cute. So then I also gave them like a heart in between them and gave them some basic shading. I wasn't gonna do too much again, so just shaded it, gave them like an outline, gave them some highlights. 
and I was going to do a clipping mask, for all of these I was like, hmm, I should probably do a clipping mask and like have colored line art. But then every single time I forgot to do it. Um, so it doesn't have that. So after all that, it was pretty much done. I honestly really love it though. I don't know what it is about monster couples, but it's just so cute. They're so precious. I love them. And I like, I don't know, I think the highlights really pop in this drawing a lot. Like, I love that heart gradient there, and we got the, like, gradient, the eyes I usually do. But it looks really good in this drawing for some reason, and I don't know, I really like them. They're very cute. On to the next one. So, whenever you load in the website, it automatically starts with, um... Uh, one monster generated so every single time i'd like technically already have one generated when i entered the screen so i thought maybe i could take this and do like a poly couple so i had unicorn witch and gargoyle and i'm like okay i can have them on a couch maybe all laying there and then i started designing all the characters and i ran into a problem immediately we have like a gargoyle which is vaguely humanoid and a witch which is like human to humanoid depending on your lore and then we had a unicorn which is just an animal so it was really weird to have this unicorn like dating two humanoid creatures so i'm like okay 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 we're not gonna do that. Maybe we can just have the unicorn like a house pet or something, like a little dog. So I went with that instead, um, and I started designing them all. Uh, the gargoyle I had to look up references for, and honestly, he just looks like a gray goblin, like a little gray gremlin thing. That was the best I could do, because like the main features I saw were pose, which I knew I wasn't gonna go for that pose, Wings, I did put that on, so not a goblin. Um, the ears, which are just kind of goblin ears, a lot of times they were more like curved up so they could look like horns even. And then there was also the nose, and a lot of them it looked like gargoyles had this like pig snout, but I don't really draw noses that much, so I could either go full snout, uh, which I feel like would have just confused it more, so it's just kind of like a weird gremlin. And then I sketched out a broom and maybe thought, like, I could have that be, like, self-animated and, like, a little pet or a friend around the house as well. Though I don't end up going for it just because the drawing gets a bit too cluttered. Well, not too cluttered. The broom would have added too much clutter. It, it's good as it is. Um, so I started sketching them, and once again, the drawing just kind of, like, took on a mind of its own. So, um... There's no more couch, and they're not, like, cuddling and watching a movie. And now the unicorns become, like, their baby rather than their pet. So I started off with, like, the unicorn being the centerpiece. And then everything came from there, like, somehow I drew the unicorn grumpy. So it was a grumpy unicorn. And what do people do with grumpy babies? They try desperately to please them. So we have, like, the witch holding an outfit, offering it to this unicorn, being like, eh? Don't be grumpy, have this cute dress. And then we have the gargoyle with a little little bear plush swooping in from the right, trying to cheer up his child. So this drawing had its fair share of problems. Um, I think this one honestly took the longest, but unicorn anatomy do i really have to say more like i don't really draw animals that much especially not horses and like i kept thinking of all these cool poses to put a horse in and i'm like i don't think horses can physically do that you know because their knees are like wonky and all that so um instead of looking up horse anatomy because i can guarantee you this is not a pose a horse can do um i just tried to channel the like images of my little pony fan art that are burned into my mind and i tried to think of how like a my little pony style pony would be drawn 
and that's what I drew. Obviously like much more in my style, but that's kind of what I based the anatomy off of. Then the stool I had some problems with. I don't know why. Something about like the angle and the curvature. I couldn't figure out where to place the legs. So that's a problem you're going to see me go back and forth on a lot. Then I also have some problem with the gargoyle's wings. Like what angle they're going to be curved out. What's their actual shape? Because I kind of didn't establish that a lot when I went into sketching this. But I eventually figure it out, kind of. They don't look that bad in the end. As I was saying earlier, though, these are a weird set of drawings. I don't know what it was, but things just got wonky, especially the first two. Like, there's a lot of eyes I'm drawing that aren't in my style, like ball eyes or oval eyes that are just fully colored in like the witch and nymph i draw those are like my normal eye style but three of the other characters have abnormal eyes then also like okay this one i drew hands and when i draw hands that is when you know something's wrong with me and not even like i drew some hands wrapped around a thing in one area and it looks kind of weird like, I drew hands. I drew stylized hands. I didn't even have to. Okay, I kind of did for the pointing thing. But originally, I wasn't even going to have them, like, pointing. I just thought that looked nicer in the end because I couldn't get the original hand position to work out. But I drew, like, hands. And they don't look that bad either. That pointing one, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like it. Like, what is this? What... What's up with this drawing? Me drawing okay hands and enjoying the process of drawing hands? What's happened? I also did hatching. Sometimes I like to play around with hatching. Um, I tend to go a bit overboard when I start doing it, which is why I don't typically do it. And here in some areas I went a little overboard. I think I always like find myself questioning what should have hatching and what's gonna have shading. So for this, what I tried to do is anything, any like arms that are going to be behind, if that makes sense. Like if we're separating it through different like planes of like, here's the closest to the viewer and furthest from the viewer. The further something is, the more likely it is to have hatching. So that makes like some things in this weird gray area of, should they have hatching? Should they not? This looks kind of weird. It just brings up so many questions whenever I do it. So there are some areas that are kind of weird and do not apply to the same rules of what should have hatching and what shouldn't that I established earlier in the drawing. And those are just like a few examples of how I like deviate from my normal style, but like you can clearly see these are not normal. But at the same time, I feel like these are some of the best artworks I've made in a while. There could be a lot of factors, like, for example, I drew these at school, which is not normal. I don't usually like drawing at school. Um, so maybe that's why I felt weird. Or maybe it's just something about, like, not really having done anything that inspired me this much in a while. I don't know. I had a lot of fun with these drawings and a lot of fun imagining these characters and the couples. And maybe it's something to do with that. I don't know, now I'm rambling, but I really had fun with them, and I really think all of them turned out very cute. But, um, back to the drawing we're actually talking about. So when it came to coloring, I had, like, each character be one color. So the witch is all purple, the gargoyle is all gray, and the unicorn's all, like, pinkish purplish. I should have pushed the pink more, I think, but oh well. Um, and then I made the background green is like a pink right so that should work but the unicorn's so much more of like a purpley pink so i probably should have done something more on the yellow side but oh well or i could have done blue blue goes with like everything so depends on if i want it to pop out more or to like look nice and then i just did some basic shading again a white outline and it was done and once again so cute they're all so cute i love it so much i mm, i don't know how to describe just i don't know i haven't felt these this proud and like this in love with 
drawings in a while. Then we move on to the final drawing. So for this one, I got Chupacabra and a ca Kappa? Kappa? Oh god. I really need to look up how to pronounce things before I go to record. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, let me think. It's Japanese, right? So it's Kappa, I think. So I wasn't too familiar with both of these. Uh, the Kappa, I knew like a lot of the lore, but the design I was a bit more unfamiliar with. And Chupacabra, like... I think I heard like one thing about that in like a movie one time, so I didn't know much about either of these characters. So yeah, I had to look them both up, and Cop is pretty easy, it's just like a turtle thing, and I think it I did pretty well. I did for all of these make them like overly cutesy, so a lot of them, since they're monsters, are like much more ugly or scary, but you know, they're, I, I made them cute because that's what I do. <laughs> Um, and then the chupacabra, because of that, it just looks like a cat. Like, I just made an anthro cat. That's all I did. Which makes the kappa just look like an anthro turtle. And it looks like I just drew an anthro couple. They're supposed to be monsters. <laughs> um, but I went with that anyway. So, for these ones, I knew I wanted to do, like, for a lot of these drawings, I go for, like, generic couple situations or poses. But it's funky, because they're monsters. So these two I'm having um, just hold hands. Through all of these, while planning it and drawing it, you think a lot about like the personalities or dynamics of the couple. Like my last video I made about this, I went on like a whole tangent about like how one of the couple's relationship works. And for this drawing, I feel like I thought a lot about like the characters' personalities too. Like the chupacabra is the more like outgoing and brave one and he pushes the kappa to like i don't know adventure or something to get out of his lake and go see the world <laughs> so i had the chupacabra leading the kappa and then like the kappa looking kind of shy and standing there and yeah also blushing also looking very cute and in love Actually, I feel like they kind of look a bit more friendly than in love, but you know what? Platonic and romantic blur lines a lot, so it's fine. Then, okay, I had this issue where originally I made the kappa like really small, or at least smaller compared to the chupacabra. And then in the actual drawing, because that's how I originally planned it, um, it looked weird because I didn't do that by accident. So then I shortened him in the sketch and like finished sketching it out and intended to move him back down at some point, but then I never did. So I went to inking and I just had like fully done this and he was kind of floating there. So I put this pile of bones underneath him and scattered some across the floor and it does make him look like kind of weird compared to how the chupacabra is standing. But, oh well, it's better than him floating there. <laughs> then I colored the kappa all green and the chupacabra all red to kind of give them that color dynamic. The red's also much darker and the greens are all much lighter. Then I did some basic shading and it was pretty much done. This one's probably my least favorite because it was a bit rushed. I made this on the first day I got sick, so um, yeah, was it in the right mindset? I still think it's really cute though. They're also still so precious and you know this is more like standard quality of my art I feel like so I don't know what happened with the other two anyway I had a lot of fun with this video uh, if you couldn't tell by me screaming about how each and every one was so cute so if you liked this video as well please make sure to like and subscribe so I know you enjoyed it also comment down below your favorite couple and follow all my social media in the description below. And I will see you all next week.